by St. Mark in the 10th chapter beginning at the 13th verse. They brought young children to Christ that he should teach them and touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Let the little children come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Beloved, you hear in this gospel the words of our Savior Christ, that he commanded the children to be brought unto him, how he blamed those that would have kept them from him, how he exhorted all to follow their innocency. You perceive how by his outward gesture and deed, he declared his goodwill towards them, for he embraced them in his arms, he laid his hands upon them and blessed them. Be ye therefore assured that he will likewise favorably receive Avery Isabel, that he will embrace her with the arms of his mercy, that he will give unto her the blessing of eternal life, and make her partaker of his everlasting kingdom. Wherefore, we being thus persuaded of the good will of our Heavenly Father toward this child, declared by his Son, Jesus Christ, let us faithfully and devoutly give thanks unto him and say together, Almighty and everlasting God, Heavenly Father, we give thee humble thanks that thou hast called us to the knowledge of thy grace and faith in thee. Increase this knowledge and confirm this faith in us evermore. Give thy Holy Spirit to the great as well, that she may be born again and be made an heir of everlasting salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. With congregation, please be seated. Do you want to read for us? Would you read for us? You are you, so we'll call you. Would you come and read what the sign says? Together. How about if you stand beside me together? It's always better in twos. We know that, come on up here, we know Avery's a little princess, so uh, she's in mind. Did you read that out loud? We'll read it all together, come back. But everyone can be the queen. Some of them have to sit on the curb and wave as I go on. Thank you. My mouth about my lips 
and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable always in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you were doing yard work this past week? Oh boy. <laughs> Some of you have gardeners or you've gotten your yards out of the way. Well, yesterday I was doing outdoor yard work and that can be fun if you get your mind around it. There were so many new buds opening and flowers that were blooming. My favorite is a purple magnolia that's right outside my study window. As I drove around the city on errands, I saw, like you, incredible displays of spring tulips and daffodils and flowering trees. All nature was saying yes to life, awakening, joyous and beautiful. And guess what? We are too. The little incarnations of creation's life force and tiny green buds or baby blue robin eggs celebrate life and its goodness and beauty. God's creative handiwork is the force of life within them and within us. We too blossom and bear fruit. In the most intimate way, spring is rising in us, not just our gardens, because divine grace is always transforming us and it would bring God so much joy if we could see ourselves as beautiful as God sees us, as vibrant and colorful and delightful as God sees us. So we say hallelujah this Easter season to this mighty, eternal, indomitable life blossoming and greening in nature and in us. And I ask you to look for it. It is here. As we have been saying this Easter at St. John's, Jesus is on the loose. And Jesus is very interested in you and that you know joy and find grace. And this is happening today in Avery's baptism. We will witness an extraordinary act of love. We will welcome little Avery Isabel into a community, a Christian community, where we celebrate the love God has for us and the love in us to give. It is a remarkable thing that we do, for in effect we are saying to Avery Isabel, in your initiation into this family, you have become part of a people, God's people. This God is a strange God, and well, we are a strange people. It's an upside down kingdom that our Lord taught us to live in. It's a way of life where the meek inherit the earth, the proud are brought down, and the lowly are raised up. It's a community where a multitude of parishioners can give their Friday night, as we did two nights ago, here at St. John's to feed over 300 people a delicious roast beef dinner and be joyful in the giving. Someone took a picture of me and I was surprised how happy I looked. But then I remembered looking around the room from my advantage as turnip girl uh, nestled beside mashed potato boy and medley of vegetable lad. And when I saw the smiles on all of those serving, they, they were as large as the smiles on those that were enjoying the delicious meal. I see this over and over again here. In giving, we are blessed. We're a community of faith, hope, and love. These things we cherish. Sometimes in this world, to succeed, we are tempted to compromise these things and to be faithless and loveless and without hope. So we need this place and we need this family to support us through such temptations and to remind us who we are and whose grace is available to us when the road is hard. For we are saints and we are also sinners. Our lives are lived in tension and sometimes we're not proud of all our choices. Yet we have known a clarity of purpose and certitude of faith that while we have been alienated from God, we have been one with God, loved Him and hurt Him, revered and ignored Him, and despite our inner contradictions and our diversity, we are a unite, 
unique and united community. For there is a presence that pervades and invades us, a presence that breaks through our smallness and our sinfulness, who helps us to see the beauty in us and around us, takes our fragmented lives and makes us whole. Presence that sets us upon a journey and is our direction. A presence that we have known as the living and the risen Jesus Christ. 140 years ago, and I don't think any of us have that much memory, but the Bannock News published a story from the gold mining days that I'd like to share with you. A group of seven gold miners who had been prospecting were attacked by bandits and they lost all their supplies. Now they were on their way to Bannock, a little town of about 350 people. On their way back to Bannock, they crossed a creek bed and as prospectors are wont to do, they reached down and they picked up a rock from the creek. They found a couple of absolutely gorgeous nuggets of gold. They knew that that was a great find. And so seven miners said to each other, shh, let's not tell anyone about what we have seen, about what we have found. Let's go back to Bannock and get some mules and picks and shovels and other supplies and then come back Monday. But let's all agree, don't tell anybody and we will go to work and stake our claim. Well, it came Monday morning, sunrise, and they were ready to leave Bannock, and there were 300 people ready to follow them. Why? Who told? And the Bannock News reported, their smiles betrayed them. Their smiles betrayed them. Good Easter people, our smiles betray us. For we have seen gold, the golden glory of eternal love, the golden glory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and there is that hidden smile within us that reveals what we have seen and known to be true. Today the Holy Spirit will enter Avery, and that remains a holy mystery to us, how God accomplishes God's purposes within us. As Avery grows in faith and journeys through life, Others will wonder, what is it about her that radiates so much beauty? Already, her smile is infectious, we know that. And her inner light is growing with the loving devotion and care of her father and her mother and her family. They will help her with us to understand this gift of God's love and its power to transform her life and the life of the world. Sometimes Jesus breaks through our lives and we are astounded at what we can do and want to do to better the world. And others are amazed that our inner smile is so strong, our light and our integrity and our passion for justice, even our openness to admit we are not perfect, so contagious. This upside down kingdom of God is the way Jesus is loose in the world today and we celebrate this wonderful love. So in the hands that hold Avery, in the eyes that are attentive to her, in the prayers that uplift her, and the lessons we teach her, and not least in the vulnerable way we share ourselves with her, she will meet Christ. She will carry his love and light out into the world. And her baptism reminds us that we are likewise blessed by God and growing into the fullness of mature faith. As we go, we acknowledge we are at different way stations. We're traveling at different paces, covering different distances, and that's okay. We are limping, stumbling, running, and leaping, rich and poor, healthy and sick, babes in arms, and very old. We are teenagers and adults in midlife crisis and pre-teething crisis. We are empty and full, sometimes tired and sometimes wired. But we are all on a journey of growth in faith, into which we have been baptized, and into which Avery today is born. Now, there's many gifts we could give her on this double birthday, so we should really sing happy birthday, happy birthday. The one that we mustn't overlook is the gift of our own conversion, 
our own fresh turning to Christ in love. It doesn't matter whether Avery only felt, feels warm water and not the warm spirit of God. It will come and is come. God will be at work at the depths of her person and Christ will be preparing her to turn again and again to him as he becomes aware, as she becomes aware of his loving presence. So we praise God and we ask God to guide us in caring for our children. And I just want to end with these thoughts that are both joyous and sobering. Wild birth changes us because it reveals a little more about the mystery of being human. We are fearful as well as joyful for our children because they're born into a world of beauty and atrocities, generosity and greed, tenderness and brutality. They will come to us for direction and meaning. They will look to the integrity and the relevancy of our faith for their answers. And sometimes they will need to reject them to go deeper with God and we'll have to give them space and respect that their path is their own even as we walk with them. They will bring burdens of anger and guilt and their questions will pierce through our faith. They will seek the living Christ at the core of our life and they will find in his presence or absence an answer. We will need, as they will, to continually turn toward the living Christ afresh as our Lord to renounce again and again the sins that would bind us and pronounce again and again the love of God that will free us. Amen. <coughs>